There's a temptation to dismiss this as little more than another chunk of money-grubbing teen fodder. Certainly the claims that this is the next Twilight is hardly a ringing endorsement for many. Come to think of it, if things had turned out a little differently, I may well not have seen this until it hit TV, if I saw it at all. But I did see it on the big screen, and I really enjoyed it. The film looks wonderful. There is a nicely stark contrast between the downtrodden subjects of the 12 districts and the affluent citizens of the capital. This makes it abundantly clear without having a word of exposition where all the power lays, and more so why it is that the 12 districts put up with this sick spectacle that is the Hunger Games every year. The games themselves, as we all know, are a fight to the death between 24 young people aged between 12 and 18. Although it's made clear on several occasions throughout the film that the games are a means of intimidation, it's made equally as clear, well, as far as I could see, that the average citizenry of the capital bear little to no animosity towards the tributes. I mean, yes, the reason for the games is regularly reiterated, but the only one who seems to actually care is President Snow. The game makers, the hosts, the viewers, they just see it as a TV show. They want a good show and that's it. If that means all the tributes die, then fine. If that means an unorthodox ending, then that's fine too. Despite having a two and a half hour running time, the film doesn't feel over long. In fact, some parts of the film do actually feel a little rushed. For certain moments, such as when they're being presented to the capital prior to the games, it felt like some moments were missing. But despite that, the build-up to the start of the games themselves is done very well and creates a fair amount of suspense. In particular, the final countdown before things kick off was excellent. When the Hunger Games begin, and the bodies start to pile up, I was actually impressed as to how bloody it wasn't. Most of the killing is done via suggestion, with fast cuts and shaky camera work missing or obscuring the death blows. And this works really well, with shots of the dead eyes of youngsters being eminently more disturbing and memorable than a blood-soaked death scene could ever be. The performances throughout are great. In fact, I think it's arguably those with the least to do that shine the most here. Donald Sutherland's President Snow is a nasty piece of work, Stanley Tucci's Caesar Flickerman is the quintessential cheesy game show host, Uh, Elizabeth Banks's uh, F.E. Trinket sounds and acts basically how I expected her to act and sound, and uh, Lenny Kravitz was great as Sinner, adding a lot to the character and, for me at least, improving upon the novel. The central performances are also top-notch. As far as I'm concerned, Jennifer Lawrence and Josh Hutcherson pretty much nail Katniss Everdeen and Peter Malark. Lawrence in particular delivers some fantastic moments throughout. I can't tell you where though as that strays too far into spoiler territory. Now, in my review of the novel I mentioned a certain scene that reduced me to tears. It's present and correct here, although not quite as I envisioned it. Now, perhaps it's because I was expecting it, but for me it didn't have as much of an impact as its written counterpart. Having said that, however, the makers did change how that scene ends, and instead of what happens in the novel, we get a beautiful moment that added the emotional kick that my foreknowledge robbed me of. It was most definitely a change for the better. Complaints are few and far between. From a filmgoer's point of view, some of the CG doesn't quite convince, which is a pity. But the CG in question is on screen for maybe two or three minutes, and unlike I Am Legend, it doesn't spoil anything. From a fan of the novel's point of view, I can only think of one change that I really disliked. I much preferred that in the novel, Haymitch gives Katniss and Peter the advice to learn something new about survival skills, camouflage, and so on. In the movie, it's general advice given to all the tributes. A small thing, maybe, but it's something that I definitely disliked. And finally, the film does end a little abruptly. For all this time spent on the build-up and in the games themselves, the end feels a lot like, well, that's your lot, come back later for part two. Overall, though, those are very minor complaints and do nothing to spoil what is both a good film and, as far as I'm concerned, a good adaptation.